all the things that you have done. My gaze was riveted all the souls on the fires you of hell. Giant orange flames with the that's what a moment to receive Christ. For the kingdom you gave your home. You're not living for all the lies until you know Jesus you Christ. Done. How shall they believe if they haven't heard? The broken heart you give in. He crucified all of them on the cross and paid back. The battered mind you release it to. That's what I want, that spiritual healing. For your then kind I can settle down in my own country. God. Never cross the boundary. We say thank you. Thank you for giving your all the sacrifice of love. Thank you. We say thank you for yielding his call and teaching us in his name. Sue Fitzmaurice once said, being told you are appreciated is one of the simplest and most uplifting things you can hear. This quote shows that appreciation goes a long way. It can really make a difference. Appreciation is the act of giving something or someone their proper value. Over time, it has been revealed that pastors are the least appreciated. Considering their very delicate and tedious profession, they are most times not appreciated. For the most part, focus is often placed on their shortcomings, failures, bad news or tragedies as often displayed on social media or heard in the news. They are placed on a pedestal and considered extraordinary human beings and as such, the expectation is that they would be above all flaws, faults, and temptations. We often forget that they are first called men before being called men of God. Trials and temptations come their way daily, yet whenever they are needed, they make themselves readily available to save, to heal, to encourage, and to deliver. They bear the burdens of others often to the detriment of their own needs and expectations. They serve the Lord Jesus Christ, our Master, who taught us the need to show appreciation to those who watch over our souls as those who must give account on the last day. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. In a time when the land of Nigeria was enshrouded in great darkness, the Lord raised a man who would minister light and life to as many as would receive, sparring one of the greatest Pentecostal revivals to grace the African continent. This is the story of Apostle Joseph Ayodele Babalola, a man whose great and daring exploits in the mission field were comparable with what is recorded of the first apostles. Though he grew up with humble Anglican parents, 
His unprecedented Okoye revival gave birth to what we now know as the Christ Apostolic Church CAC, which is one of the largest Pentecostal assemblies in Western Africa. This man was ruthless and dogged in his faith, believing that God had absolute victory through Jesus Christ. It was by resolute faith in the name of Jesus Christ that he did the things he did. He prayed long and hard in the name of Christ, believing that he would have victory and God expressed his power through him mightily. As long as he lived, he was a threat to the kingdom of darkness, breaking the hold of witchcraft over people's lives, casting down idols, and raising the dead back to life. Let us dive into the life and the exploits of the man who changed the face of Pentecostalism in Nigeria forever. As if being announced by God himself, Apostle Joseph Ayodili Babalola's birth was said to be surrounded by mysterious circumstances. On April 25, 1904, it was believed that a strange and mighty object exploded and shook the clouds when he was born to David Rotimi and Madame Marta Talami in Odrowa Ilofa Choir State. His father was a leader at the CMS Anglican Church at Odwawa, and Joseph Babalola was raised in that faith. Apostle Babalola's education was stopped abruptly after his fourth year in elementary school when he decided to apprentice as a motor mechanic instead. He did this for two years and then enlisted in the public works department where he became a steam roller operator. It was while doing this that he encountered God in 1928. On October 9th, while he was working on a steam roller along Akure Lisha Road by the river Ariro, the machine stopped suddenly. The situation was very puzzling as no fault was found with the vehicle upon inspection. Try as he might, the machine would not start. Then he heard a loud voice from above, like the sound of mighty rushing water. The voice cried his name three times and told him that if he did not leave his job and start preaching, he would be cut off from the earth. Babalala did not want to listen to this voice. He responded like many of the Old Testament prophets initially resisting the call. Then on October 11, 1928, while again trying to repair the defunct machine, he heard the audible voice from the Lord telling him to abandon the job and start preaching. Finally, Babalala gave in after he had received assurance of divine guidance. He was instructed to fast for seven days. He obeyed and at the end of the period, he saw a great figure of a man in a dazzling robe. Babalala described this man as the Lord Jesus, who told him of the work ahead of him and the trials and persecution he would face, and again assured him of victory and divine protection. An angel of the Lord visited him and gave him a whole yam to eat. He was given a hand bell and told that the sound of the bell would always drive away evil spirits. He was also given a bottle of life-giving water to heal all manners of sickness.
Omi, a bele baba lo, a fun baba, fun ise. Enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit, Joseph Ayodele Babalola began his ministry. He first preached in Odwawa. As instructed, he appeared in the town covered in palm fronds and disfigured with charcoal paints and was mistaken for a lunatic. Undaunted by curious stares and degrading looks, Babalola immediately started prophesying to the inhabitants of Odrowa, foretelling an impending danger coming to them if they did not repent and follow Christ. A few weeks later, there was an outbreak of smallpox in the town and about 300 people died. The seemingly madman whose prophecies were once rejected was quickly sought for. He returned to the town, and those who repented after contracting the disease were healed. Babalala was a man who was graced to pray, and it was said by one of his disciples that his shortest prayer time was about three hours. He founded Oriokeanu, Mountain of Mercy Prayer Ground, located in Erioikiti, Nigeria. There is a spot on the mountain top where his knee pierced through, leaving a giant hole in the rock after spending long hours in prayer. He also regularly organized prayer meetings in his father's Anglican church in Ilofa. Many people attended because of the miracle God performed through him. In addition to his vibrant prayer life, Babalola was also a devoted family man and compassionate fellow. He married his wife, Dickiness Docus, in 1935 and had three children with her. Babalola's family members were also committed to the faith and frequently joined their patriarch to pray and fast. It is said that he was a compassionate man who opened his heart and his home to those who were less fortunate around him. His living daughters attest that they always had many people who visited and stayed in their home. His wife, Docus, would cater to these people. Regardless of whether Baba was around or not, she had a heart for Baba's mission and supported him earnestly. Word of Babalola's unique ministry continued to spread in Western Nigeria and other ministers started to take interest in him. He went to Lagos on an invitation by Daniel Ajibola, a member of the Faith Tabernacle Congregation where he was baptized. He was also invited for a revival service by a pastor of the Sudan Interior Mission at Yagba where God wrought mighty works of healing. Many were converted, having believed in the Lord Jesus Christ during the revival. Despite the great success of the revival service, Babalola never used the opportunity to establish a separate Christian organization. He continued to point back to the Lord as the source of all power and healing. He declared to his followers that he had registered his membership with the Faith Tabernacle and persuaded them to become members of the church. Then came the mighty Okeoye revival, in which thousands of people, including traditional religionists, Christians from other denominations and non-Christians, were converted to Faith Tabernacle. The revival began with the raising of a dead child by the young Joseph Ayodele Babalola. The mother of the dead child, who was restored to life, went about spreading the news around the town of Elisha, claiming that a miracle-working prophet had come to the town of Okoye. 
This attracted a large number of people to Okoye to see the prophet. What followed was three weeks healing of about 100 lepers, 60 blind people and 50 lame persons. Word spread about the prophet whose shadow healed the sick and people brought their sick from far and near to be ministered to by the apostle. This divinely kicked off the great revival of 1930 which brought people from all parts of Africa and the diaspora without the use of mass media broadcasts. Babalola's revival spread from Elisha to Ibado, Ijebu, Lagos, Efualaye, Aramoko Ikiti, and Abelkuta. From then on, with the bell and Yoruba Bible in hand, he toured Yoruba land and eastern Nigeria, preaching about repentance and renunciation of idolatry, the importance of prayer and fasting, and the power of God to heal sickness. No greater revival preceded that of Baba Lola. After the great revival of Okoye, the prophet was directed by the Holy Spirit to go out on further missionary journeys. Baba Lola carried a heavy atmosphere of the miraculous around him. Apart from works of healing and deliverance, Many miracles that he did were reported by his disciples. Sometimes, when he was preaching, he was seen to move and float in air without his feet touching the ground. While in Ushi in Ekiti land for his evangelical mission, he was given a land and a forest to do his mission campaign. The forest was thought to be an evil forest there was a tree that stood tall no matter how many times it had been cut down. The apostle approached the tree while ringing his bell and praying. Then the tree was cut down and it never sprang up again. He went on to perform many miracles and works of healing in that town. Shortly after, he visited Ifira in Ikiti. There was a god called Egule in the Shawa quarters of the town who was greatly feared by the people. This god dwelled on a hilltop in a port that was guarded by a large python and no one dared approach it for fear of being harmed. Apostle Babalola insisted on visiting the hill of this god and people from neighboring towns and villages gathered in Ifira to witness what would happen to the man of God. Immediately he sighted this god and its python, he started ringing his bell, and the pot which housed the god shook violently, broke into pieces, and the snake fled. When people saw this, there was great rejoicing in the land, and the people trampled the python till it died. That day, many people abandoned their idol worship to follow the true God. From Ushi and Ifira, he and his men moved to Efualaye, also in Ikti land, where they received a warm reception from the Obalaye of Efo. It was there that Babalola chose a land regarded to be an evil forest as a site for prayer. Despite the protest of the Oba, Babalola insisted on establishing his prayer ground there and he and his disciples entered the bush, cleared it and consecrated it as a prayer ground. When the people of Efo saw that no harm came to them, many of them were inspired to accept the new faith.
A warrant for his arrest was issued from Ilorin. He was arrested for preaching against witches and he was sentenced to jail for six months in Benin City in March 1932. This made him the first prophet to be jailed. After serving the jail term, he went back to Efalai, where he continued to preach and continued preaching in different towns and countries till the Lord called him home. After a beautiful life spent with his lovely wife, Joseph Ayobabalala slept in the Lord on July 26, 1959 in Ede Oshun State. It was said to have prophesied his own death at a prayer meeting where he announced that a great tree in CAC would soon fall. He told the members present to pray and then retreated to his room where he quietly slept in the Lord. Apostle Joseph Ayodili Babalala was one of the greatest African church leaders in our contemporary time. He was a great prophet, evangelist, a compassionate leader, and miracle worker in African Pentecostal history. He was a man who was in tune with his office and calling as a man of God, succeeding despite the hostile dark world that shunned him. He expressed the power of God greatly and brought light and deliverance to many who were in bondage. Till this day, men still visit the mountain where Apostle Babalola prayed and upon calling the name of Jesus Christ, they receive their miracles. The host of heaven and the body of Christ on earth continue to celebrate this great soldier of our faith. To Apostle Joseph Ayodili Babalola, a great apostle of our faith, for his devoted service to the kingdom and the trail he has left for others to walk in, we are eternally grateful and we use this opportunity to say Gracias Apostle Joseph Ayodili Babalola. Gracias. It has truly been a wonderful time with you all and we sincerely say thank you. We truly hope that through this project, we have encouraged you to genuinely appreciate your pastors today and always. It is never too late to say thank you and this can be done through several ways, through words of encouragement, your prayers, your readiness, willingness and availability to help gifts given, and many more. We shall return with another amazing episode shortly, and we are excited to show you our next project. We sincerely hope that you will stay tuned and that you are just as excited as we are for the next episode. Thank you. God bless you.